Hey, what's up guys? Coming to you here with a quick little video uh, making up a welder extension cable. And I get quite a few questions on my YouTube channel about uh, wiring and, and that kind of thing. And I'm not an electrician. I'm, you know, I have some basic understanding of it. I do my a lot of my own wiring in the shop. And so I thought I would make up this video here uh, and show you guys what I'm doing. I have a need to weld some stuff outside and I've got a breaker box outside that's got some 30 amp, 220 uh, volt, 230 volt, 240 volt, whatever it is, um, 30 amp uh, breakers in it. And um, one of them is for an air compressor that's not being used. So I'm going to steal it temporarily, but I need a little extension cord uh, and a way to tap into it. And so I was just going to show you how I'm going to do that. So this is some SO cord that I had laying around and it is 12 four um, which i believe is rated for 20 amps i'm only going to be welding 14 gauge and some really small little one inch stitch welds so this is going to be plenty adequate for what i'm doing but if you're going to do try to do something like this at home you're going to want to pay attention to uh to the uh the, the kind of cord that you're getting make sure it's rated to support your welder and uh, most likely you're going to need something more beefy uh, than this so again this is um 12, I don't know, it's 12-4, I believe. So there's three, uh, you know, three wires, a, a ground, two power wires, and a neutral. Uh, so we've got a, um, a the standard welding um, outlet, which is a, you know, 50 amp rated receptacle. And this is one that you can mount on the wall or you can use it as a little, uh, kind of a standalone portable, you know, cable in. So let's go ahead and uh, get started here. I'm just gonna open this up. I'm not actually put one of these together like this exact one, but they're all pretty much the same. So we'll just kind of do it together here. So, um, All right, so what you what you see there is um, trying to got a light here, trying to get you the best light possible. These are just some mounting screws if you're going to mount this on the wall. Uh, some wood screws and one uh, machine screw there. And you'll notice that we've got. Um, all right, so we're gonna. Uh, you can tell that this is the the green one here is the the ground, and then um, we should have a label. And I'm just trying to get this to show up. A lot of times there, the the, uh, the two power wires will be labeled. I don't actually see. Um, the label on this one. So we're going to we'll just use our uh, our white and black. And. Um, you know, we got four wires in here, but we're only going to use three of them. So let me uh, go ahead and get this trimmed out and fed through. You're going to have a knockout here that you're going to want to take out. Um, and, all right, you see it's got two two holes in the bottom of it there that, the, uh, that get bolted in. And then our uh, other machine screw here is how you uh, connect that. So this gets attached here like this, and then this will clamp down on the wire, and then our cover will go back on. So pretty straightforward. So uh, I'm not gonna say anything, you just see me doing the cutting here, and we'll go from there.
All right, hopefully that's showing up good in the camera there. You can see we've got the uh, the black wire, the white wire, and we got the green ground wire there uh, connected to the green screw. The lighting may not be all that great in here, but hopefully you can see what's going on. So the next thing we're gonna do is, um, let's see, we'll put the cover back on. All right, so you want to get that uh, pretty snug right there because that serves as your strain relief to keep it from disconnecting inside of there, which is definitely not what you want. All right, and so the other end, we're just going to cut this just like we did there and expose our wires. So I'll, I'll get this cut off camera and uh, expose, and I'm going to show you how I'm gonna tap it into the uh, the fuse box out there to get some temporary power. All right, I just wanna show you this real quick. This is our uh, extension cord that we just made up. This is a pre-made 50 amp, 25 foot, specifically for, for a welder extension cord, and it's got the 50 amp. And again, we're I'm in the United States, I'm in uh, Texas, so if you're uh, in another country watching this, your stuff, you know, probably is going to be different. But if you're in the U.S., this is uh, going to be this kind of the standard plug for a welder. Almost every welder, in fact, I've got four or five welders here, and they every one of them has that same end on it. So this is going to, we're going to run this up into the fuse box and connect it to a 30 amp breaker. And then this is going to connect to this and we'll have our 25 foot, but I didn't want to take these molded ends apart, uh, you know, and mess that up to be able to connect it in. And I don't have a permanent outlet out there. So um, this is the next best thing that we're going with. All right, so I'm gonna go uh, take you out to the fuse box and show you uh, that connection. The one wire that we didn't use, I just taped that off. Uh, not that it's any kind of an issue, but for sure you want to tape it off in case that were to make contact with anything inside the fuse box and again i'm not an electrician this may or may not be somewhere close to code i don't know but i don't feel it's unsafe and if you're concerned at all about what you're doing is safe or not then you probably would want to call an electrician and have them do this but if you want to save a little money and do this on your own you definitely can do it All right, for you guys that watch my channel on a regular basis, know that I'm out here working on getting the uh, paint booth built. And so we've got our um, main joist here for the roof or the ceiling. Um, and I don't know the exact terminology. I know these are sea purlins or purlins. So, um, you know, we're going to have five purlins going across here. And the uh, air compressor just kicked on, so I'll come back and show you. Well, from, from here, you, you probably can't hear it, but um, anyway, so uh, I've elected to weld those uh, cross purlins in place, and I need to get my welder out here, and I don't have any uh, 50 amp outlets out here. I've got 220 uh, 30 amp outlets for the dust collector and the, uh, the smaller air compressor, but no 50 amp, so. Um, I will uh, go ahead and show you what I'm going to do now with the extension cord that we just made and show you how we're going to get this going here. All right, so here's our fuse panel. And uh, for right now, we're going to use this 30 amp breaker that is currently going to the air compressor, which is that air compressor right there. Hopefully you can hear me over the air compressor. I'm going to turn this breaker off. And um, go ahead and take the uh, panel, the cover off here. Or this one may 
just rotate up. I'm not sure. You can't see it, but I'm taking the bottom screw out down there. Get this one out. Now, this is a live fuse panel. So if you're doing this at home and you're not comfortable doing this, turn the breaker, turn your main, turn your power off. One thing that's kind of interesting is uh, stupid dirt dauber built a complete dirt dauber nest on that ground wire right there. But um, all right, so uh, I've got the power off to this, so I'm going to disconnect these wires that are coming in. Sorry about bumping the camera here. Hopefully I don't get electrocuted. Are you guys watching this? So just, uh, you know, this is a live power wire coming in, but I watch these electricians do this all the time with power on, no problem at all. Do I seem nervous? All right, so again, we've got this off here, and um, which means we got power coming into the breaker, but there's no power coming out of it. So these are not live, these are going out to the compressor. We'll just tuck these out of the way. I'm gonna put some uh, tape on those just to tape them up for now. I'm going to get the right breaker that I need and uh, wire in um, the AC unit is going to get wired off of this box for the paint booth. But for now, I just need to get temporary power to get this welded. I'm not going to have a welder out here, so I don't need permanent power. All right, I'm gonna get some tape and tape these up. Even though they're not live, I don't want them accidentally touching something. So we've got our uh, temporary receptacle there and our real extension cord there. You could easily make that any length you want. Again, this is SO cord. You can get it at by the foot at Home Depot or your electrical supply place. And you wanna make sure you get the right gauge for whatever, try to you know amp your welder needs. So we'll get the welder out here and get it fired up and uh, test it, make sure it's working.
All right, well, as you can see, we got our welding done out there. It didn't have any problems at all. Uh, after I was done welding beads, I would come over and feel of this just to see if it was heating up too much. And it was, uh, you know, ambient temperature, which it was 100 degrees outside when I was welding that. So obviously it was warm, but everything was warm. So you can get everything you need to make this uh, type of extension cord up here at um, Home Depot or your local electrical supply. You could, you could get another end for this as well to make it a real extension cord. If you want to buy something pre-made, you can get these this style here um, on, on Amazon. And um, if you just do a, an ex, you know, a search for 25 foot uh, 50 amp welder extension cord, you'll see these come up. You can get them in 50 feet as well. I think they're about $50 or $60 for the 25 foot ones and pretty close to 100 for the, the 50 foot ones. But anyway, again, if you're worried at all about safety or electrical, you know, just hire an electrician to get it done. But if you want to save three, four, five hundred dollars and doing this kind of work yourself, then hopefully some information in this would be helpful. At the end of the day, you're responsible for your own safety, not me.